Martin Truex Jr. just escaped the Coliseum chaos. Martin Truex Jr. won the Bush Light Clash at the Coliseum on Sunday night at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum in front of a massive, adoring crowd at one of the most storied sporting venues. It was Truex Jr.'s first NASCAR Cup Series victory in over a season. And so, let's take a look at the Coliseum's highlights and other recent news in the NASCAR community. Hello NASCAR fam and welcome back to NASCAR Live. But before we begin, subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. And let's begin. During the final 25 laps of the 150 lap annual non-points exhibition race that served as the opening race of the NASCAR season, Truex's number 19 Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota narrowly held off Austin Dillon's number 3 Richard Childress Racing Chevrolet by 0.786 seconds. The former Cup Series champion won the first Bush Light Clash race of his career. The number 8 Richard Childress Racing Chevrolet, driven by Dillon's new teammate Kyle Busch, finished third in the race. The top three finishers were honored with medals on a podium, just like at the Olympic Games that the venue was well known for having hosted. Truex, a native of New Jersey, praised the Bass Pro Shop's Toyota Camry as a really, really terrific race car. Yeah, just a really good race car. By the, you know, the guys did a great job with this uh, Bass Pro Shops Club, uh, Toyota Camry, Tracker Boats, Reeser Food, Fine Foods, Auto Owners, True Timber, uh, Rock, Cessna, oh, just all, all of our partners that let us do this. Uh, last year was, uh, was a pretty rough season for us, you know, with no wins. And uh, to come out here and kick it off this way, just really proud of all these guys. And uh, tonight was just kind of persevere, not give up, and just um, battle through it. And we found ourselves in the right spot at the end. So. Sometimes they work out your way and sometimes they don't. Tonight it went our way um, and we made some good adjustments too. The location for this event was notable thanks to the towering Hollywood sign on the hills overlooking Turn 3 and the Los Angeles skyline immediately beyond Turn 2. The 100-year-old Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum was jam-packed for the race with many new spectators mingling with the most devoted longtime fans. Everyone was dressed in their best NASCAR fan t-shirts, driver jackets, and hats, eager to watch the NASCAR Cup Series deliver the high-drama, short-track action that has made the 75-year-old sport an American treasure. The track was specially constructed inside the stadium, introducing the sport to a new market that seems to have embraced it passionately. The frustration on Sunday night was frequently in mid-season form, despite the fact that this was only a preseason exhibition. Sixteen cautions caused the race to be delayed. Dillon and Bubba Wallace collided in the closing stages of the race. Despite leading 40 laps and pressuring Truax as the race came to a close, Bubba Wallace took the brunt of the incident and was forced to settle for 22nd place in the 27-car field rather than compete for the victory. The top five was completed by Kyle Larson and Alex Bowman, both Hendrick Motorsports teammates. With his first race in the number 45 Toyota of 2311 Racing, Tyler Reddick finished sixth. Dylan stated, I, I hate it for Bubba. He had a good car and a good run, but you can't tell who's either pushing him or getting pushed. I just know he sent me through the corner, and I saved it three times through there, released the brake, all kinds of stuff, and then when I got down, I was going to give the same. Um, probably it was a little too hard, but get by with an all Chevy was pretty good. It's beat up, used up. A teammate let me go uh, try and get Truex at the end. That was nice, and um, yeah, it's been fun. Hopefully we can do this more often. Ryan Priest, a 32-year-old from New England, who was making his maiden start in the number 41 Ford for Stuart Haas Racing, had the most laps led with 43, but lost the lead with 24 laps remaining after informing his crew that a fuel pump issue had arisen. He came in seventh place. William Byron drove the number 24 Hendrick Motorsports Chevrolet to complete the top 10. Denny Hamlin, who had earlier in the day won his qualifying heat in his number 11 JGR Toyota, came in ninth. In order to determine the field for the main event under the lights and the heat of the Coliseum's renowned Paris-style torch, the four heat races and two last-chance qualifier races on Sunday afternoon offered plenty of drama. Eight vehicles failed to qualify, including both of the RFK Racing Fords driven by team co-owner Brad Kozolowski and Chris Busher. On that list of DNQs, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Harrison Burton, Ty Dillon, Corey LaJoy, Cody Ware, J.J. Ely, and B.J. McLeod joined the RFK drivers. 
The Daytona 500, the first race of the regular season, will be held at the Daytona International Speedway on February 19th as the NASCAR Cup Series travels east to Florida. On the other hand, two cars ran out of fuel during a 37 and a half mile NASCAR race. The 37 and a half mile race was unfortunately plagued by a record breaking 16 caution periods and two cars eventually ran out of gasoline. Both of Front Row Motorsports' two vehicles, the number 34 driven by Michael McDowell and the number 36 driven by Todd Gilliland, had run out of gas by the time the race was over. The Fox Sports commentators made light of the potential of drivers running out of fuel before the championship race, saying that 150 laps around the quarter-mile track shouldn't cause any problems for the teams. Naturally, running with less gasoline has advantages, but many of those advantages are negated by the fact that the cars can't really pick up any speed in such close quarters, and nobody should have run out. However, that was based on the supposition that the race would go as planned and take place this year. Instead of a reasonably simple 150 lapper split into two 75 lap heats with a concert in between, we experienced a wreck fest. The race concluded with 16 caution flags because everyone was eager to get involved in one another's affairs. The Clash format started to cause issues at that point. After a crash, the cars would pace the pack, but yellow flag laps are not counted, thus they weren't truly moving forward in the race, just fuel being consumed. Again, that shouldn't have been a problem. But The Clash also features a number of heat races and last chance qualification competitions before the main event. In one of the two LCQ races, both the front row motorsports drivers were in a competitive situation to qualify for the starting lineup. Prior to the main competition, the drivers who took part in the first heat races had a chance to refuel. They supposedly jumped straight from the LCQ to the final because the LCQ participants didn't have time. Both of the FRM drivers had to abandon the race early because none of their cars had a fully filled tank. The FRM drivers weren't the only ones who proceeded directly from the qualifying round to the race, so if the fuel situation had been an issue for everyone, we would have seen a lot more people glide to a stop before the finish line. Just the way it looks, one team made a mistake. But it's not the event's best looking presentation, which made it difficult to watch. Especially following the success of last year, we had great expectations for a midnight event, but it was difficult to avoid becoming pessimistic during the second 75-lap segment. Martin Truex Jr.'s victory in the end was less of a victory and more of a relief that the race was finally done. The race's spectators appear to have a terrific time, but if we want to keep the LA Coliseum open through 2024, NASCAR will need to seriously reconsider how it intends to run future races. Why NASCAR is skipping Auto Club Speedway in California for 2024 and possibly longer? Nothing is certain, especially when it comes to NASCAR's National Touring Series schedules, as the organization has demonstrated in previous years. In the previous two years, NASCAR has added new locations, changed race dates, and will soon be racing on the streets of Chicago. But one thing is certain, Southern California's Auto Club Speedway won't be included in the calendars for 2024 when they are unveiled later this year. In fact, it's possible that there won't be a race there either the following year. In a few short weeks, the two-mile circuit will host its final race after being first opened in 1997. Auto Club Speedway President Dave Allen stated, Unfortunately in 24, you know, with, even with the, the most aggressive timelines, we will not race in 24 um, on, on the new track. So, um, you know, what that timeline is beyond that still has yet to be determined. And, uh, you know, I, there's, just, there's just milestones and things that we need to, to get through. Um, and not least of which is the design of the racetrack. We're still working on that. Um, there's been a lot of iterations of, of what we're designing both on track and, and off track with the, with the new facility. And uh, it'll be really exciting to get to a point where we can, where we can share that because uh, what we're working on is, uh, is, is really exciting. Uh, the fact that you know, we race at a half mile at Martinsville and a half mile at Bristol, you know, it's, it'd be cool to have another half mile, especially out here on the West Coast with uh, so much racing history here. So uh, we're looking forward to it and looking forward to getting to a point where we can share that, that information. And, Get, uh, get a little more excited about it. To establish and maintain NASCAR racing in the Southern California market, NASCAR has put in great effort. The Auto Club Speedway, formerly known as California Speedway, has been the conduit for that presence since 1997. 
It felt like the ideal place to introduce the sport to the general public, given its location around 50 miles west of Los Angeles, the second largest media market in the nation. The two-mile track would reportedly be changed into a short track in 2020, according to sources. That hasn't happened yet, though. Additionally, not even the precise setup has been disclosed. NASCAR's presence in Los Angeles is one thing we do know. It's possible that the market for the upcoming year, and possibly the one after that, is in doubt. Now, enter the LA Memorial Coliseum. NASCAR has begun its season there for the past two years in downtown Los Angeles' iconic stadium. Featuring the non-points clash exhibition race on a specially constructed short track, the clash's past two years of success raised the question of whether NASCAR might continue to be present in Los Angeles. By staging a points race at the LA Coliseum, while Auto Club Speedway is undergoing redevelopment, what about a Coliseum with events like heat races? I mean, it can, sure, according to Kyle Busch. Um, I mean, it can, sure. Uh, we do it at Bristol, obviously, you've got heat races. Uh, there and then you lead into a feature and things like that. So uh, it certainly could, but I feel like what it is and the way the format was designed initially when we came when we came here last year and the way the show was was uh, you know super enticing uh, for the fans. I felt like it was really good for the drivers that hit it that were up front most of the time, like myself and Pagano Reddick. Um, you know where we did a good job early on in the weekend practice qualifying everything and you just kind of set yourself up and uh, was able to stay up front so um, i don't know that it needs to be a points race but it certainly could be in addition to being a driver denny hamlin also owns a team he is aware of how crucial it is for nascar to be present in the los angeles market uh, the value is the, the location i think is the biggest thing is that uh, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of team sponsors probably are headquartered somewhere near here. So the value and the activation that, that comes with that is valuable. It's also valuable to inter introduce new fans to the sport. So I think that, um, you know, with roughly 40% of the, the audience that's going to show up this weekend, going to be new, new uh, audience members in our sport, it just helps grow the sport in general. So, you know, it's kind of a pretty, pretty positive thing from that standpoint. As for competing at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum race, a points-paying event might be a possibility. And that ends today's episode. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see even more of our incredible videos.